Awesome. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us today on um, this episode of Everyday Entrepreneur. And I am really excited to have with us today, Tammy B. Elland of Workplace List. Um, Workplace List. And uh, today we're going to be talking about um, Tammy, her entrepreneurial journey. And we're also going to be talking about uh, the future of work, remote work, and all things work that uh, Tammy and remote uh, work, workplace list her business focuses on. So, but first, welcome Tammy. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Michael. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, this is this is great. Um, um, and so, Tammy, I I got to uh, I got introduced to you through um, my, one of my employees, uh, Stephanie Stewart, who um, is our you know reconciled HR recruiter and um, and she saw you speak at a remote work conference, I believe, online, and then got connected with you. Um, and everything I've heard about you and the work you're doing with workplaces has been great. But why don't we first start with how did you get how did you get involved um, in the whole idea of remote work, and what kind of inspired you um, to start uh, Workplaceless? Yeah, so I started my business because I personally have been working remotely since 2011, primarily uh -huh. in the ed tech space. And what I noticed as a professional, but also as somebody who served on some hiring committees as well, I noticed, number one, that there was a lack of internal professional development opportunities for remote workers. So I struggled with figuring out what my potential career path could be and how to access resources that could help me achieve those goals. And then on the other side of things, I also struggled with really being able to identify what potential talent would fit in really well with our remote work culture. And so using my background in instructional design and e-learning, I decided to fill that gap myself. And so that's why I created Workplace List. That's great. That's great. So, and, and so did you, um, did you always know that you wanted to become an entrepreneur and start that? Or were you kind of going, you know, in a certain direction and like you explained, saw this need and went, okay, let's start workplace list. Yeah. So I started out my professional career as an academic. So I was on a path to be a Spanish professor. Oh, wow. So very <laughs> different than what I'm doing now. However, a lot of the things that uh, the skills and uh, the work that I was doing in that field um, centered a lot around uh, teaching. And so those skills I use to this day. And um, so I started out as a uh, as an academic and I wanted to be a Spanish professor. And then I realized that I didn't want to do that. Um, I wanted to have some more creative opportunities with you know, me as a professional, and I felt like the academic pathways are pretty rigid. Um, and so I started my own business. And when I first started um, a business, it was in the language curriculum development side. Um, so I started a language school and then created curriculum specifically for language programs. But then I started working um, in ed tech and from ed tech moved on to corporate training and corporate e-learning. Um, and that was sort of that path there. And then realized in 2017, the end of 2017, that um, this remote workspace was really growing. And I also recognized the potential impact that providing these support resources could have on both potential employees and then also businesses. That's great. So you kind of went through this journey like any, any startup where you thought you'd go one direction and it, was, it naturally fell in the stretch of your strengths. Um, and what you were doing at the time. And then you pivoted when you saw an opportunity um, that was available to you. Now, when you look at the kind of field of remote work and this, the future of what's happening, um, what impacts are you seeing um, in particular in the US in regards to how remote work is impacting the ways people start businesses or the ways in which um, companies are looking at um, hiring employees? What, what are the different ways you're seeing that impact um, yeah. take shape? Yeah, I think the primary word that really captures all of the potential impact is empowerment. I think that remote work empowers individuals who are living in communities across the country and across the world, um, whether they are urban, rural, wherever, it 
empowers individuals to take control of their professional career um, and gain access to professional opportunities in a way that we've never seen before. So people can start businesses from you know, a tiny, tiny rural town of 300, or they can find a job at a tech startup also living in that tiny town of 300. So it empowers the employees and the workforce and it also empowers businesses to expand their talent pool and it empowers them to also explore um, the processes that really make a successful business um, in a way that we've also not really seen before because so many businesses have relied on that traditional model of setting up a physical location and mm. depending on that sort of headquarter mentality to then drive the culture and processes of the business. That's 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 great. Yeah, we we've, we've definitely benefited as reconciled with our growth in being able to not be limited by the location of of individuals or or talent and resources, and also conversely the location of customers like to serve them um, with that. Um, what are the challenges that um, or kind of the common roadblocks or stumbling blocks that people have around the idea of remote work, whether it's themselves entering remote work or wanting to go hire people um, outside of their local area? What are some of the common challenges or stumbling blocks you you hear and see? The most common block that I see is always around trust and hmm. the idea of can I trust my people to get the work done? Can I trust a company that doesn't have a headquarters to, um, to be professional and to deliver the same kind of product or service that um, a co-located team mm. can do? And then can my boss trust me or will I be micromanaged or will I be completely left in the dark? Um, and so it all seems to revolve around this common theme of trust. Uh, and so that huge barrier becomes insurmountable if it doesn't get addressed on all of those sides, right? So trust is not just a one-way street. It's, you know, a, an intersection or a roundabout with many, many <laughs> intersecting <laughs> stakeholders. That's, that's great. So trust, trust is this, um, we like to use the term the trust gap, right? And it's that there's this big trust gap that's created for a variety of reasons, um, whether it's the service that you're trying to sell takes a lot of trust to provide or um, the l physical location. Um, so you described like this trust being something that there's a big stopping block. What are, what are the ways you've seen companies that are doing remote work or individuals doing remote work bridge that trust gap? How do they kind of walk over or bridge that trust gap so that that, that stumbling block is gone or lessened to a much smaller degree? Mm -hmm. The first step is really engaging in an actual conversation with all of those um, involved parties. And so starting with conversation and then aligned with that would be providing educational resources. So on the individual, um, you know, how to work successfully as a professional in a remote environment for a leader, how to trust your team and how to develop a culture that does provide that psychological safety that promotes trust um, and allows people to take to take risks. Um, and so, but the first thing is starting a conversation, right? You can't, change can never happen in a vacuum. And so uh, where we see these kinds of remote work initiatives um, fall short is where not everybody who's involved is part of the, the conversation. Hmm. Um, so including everyone in that conversation and that change is really the key to uh, converting your role to remote, um, starting a remote business, et cetera. That makes a lot of sense. That's that's really, really great. Um, are, you, are you seeing certain industries or certain parts of the world where um, startups or companies in those industries or, or certain parts of the world are are migrating or growing faster in remote work um, or the opportunities for remote work are seem to be there more than in other industries or other parts of the world? Well, by nature of the genesis of the industry, I think the tech industry has really set the stage for being open to remote work and providing, creating the tools by necessity, uh, creating the tools that support and facilitate remote work. So traditionally we've seen, you know, um, more tech companies be very comfortably in this space. 
But what's exciting is that other industries that are potentially uh, interpreted as uh, traditional or a little bit more conservative in their business models, um, they're starting to embrace remote work as well. So in the legal side of things, um, also the financial sector, uh, and even with government contracting too. Um, and so there are different needs and uh, barriers for all of those particular industries. But what's exciting about remote work is that it really, it, you know, the niche is not really a vertical, right? It's not one industry. It's more of a horizontal. Um, yeah. And it's just <laughs> a certain, certain, um, set of services and products and roles uh, within each industry that are compatible with remote work. And basically, if you rely on your computer at all, some element of your work can be remote. Yeah, no, that's 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 great. Yeah, I'm always fascinated by when I when I browse the local job boards, you know, we have a local paper that I read and I look at all the job ads on there or uh, go on Indeed and look at all the jobs in Vermont. Um, I look at it and go, wow, half or at least half of these jobs could be done remotely. Um, why are companies limiting themselves to the unemployment challenges that face our, our area where we're under 2% unemployment? Um, why are they limiting themselves when they could be expanding out there? And so if, even if a part of your job is, or most of your job is done on a computer, uh, then, then obviously remote work could potentially be the option for that role. That's great. Yeah. When, when you think about um, how to make remote, remote work successful, um, or the, you know, the, the kinds of policies or practices that really make remote work successful. What are some, what are some of the kind of uh, practices you're seeing companies implement or remote workers themselves implementing that really gives them the extra edge of making that remote work environment successful for them? So uh, there are several practices, um, mostly, I mean, I'm very biased, but I see this trend of companies that are really successful and really vocal about um, how successful their remote practices are. Um, you know, it's providing learning and development to their employees and understanding that there are differences with a remote work model and a co-located work model and being just really aware of those um, and constantly having these conversations about why it's different what additional support resources are needed and how do we get those resources, whether it, those are financial resources or time resources um, or something else. They're just very cognizant of keeping that conversation going. It's not a question of, okay, we've had this three day long discussion about remote work. We've identified all of the problems now go, go for it. And we're not going to address, we're not going to change anything as we go. Um, so, so it's a constant, you know, discussion of what makes work work and how does it work within our organization? And then of course, just having a really concrete and comprehensive remote work policy. Um, so many companies do not have one. Um, and I'll, I'll leave it to a colleague of mine, Laurel Farr, who wrote a really interesting article about some of the ways that remote work can potentially be illegal. You know, depending on how your company practices it. Um, so I'm not going to touch on that right now, <laughs> but, uh, but it's a very interesting consideration. So I think, you know, companies that are successful with employing a remote work model, think about it as a holistic approach to being a thriving culture for their employees, as well as, you know, achieving those business goals. Um, and that means constant conversations and education as well as you know, a comprehensive policy and really looking at all of the potential ramifications and benefits of remote work. Oh, that makes that's that's great. It makes a lot of sense. Now, I I know that you are you are a common speaker at, at conferences related to this topic, and um, I think I think I've I've seen videos of you all over the world at different places, <laughs> different conferences. Where where has um, where um, has um, the uh, kind of your your opportunities taking you? What parts of the world have they taken you? Um, and where, what have you, what have you seen in regards to the uniqueness of this kind of remote work environment and culture um, in some of these co conferences and events that you attend? 
Yeah, well, so overall, my experience at remote work conferences are super positive. Like everyone's so excited about the potential that remote work has. Like we, it, it's very inspiring to be in a room full of hundreds of people who are all advocates for the same thing. Um, so that is super, super exciting. And that's true of all of the events that I've been to. Um, now, so I, I've been to um, Spain. So Nomad City is a, a remote work conference in the Canary Islands, which is a wonderful event. Wow, that's great. Um, <laughs> and then I was at Grow Remote, uh, one of their events in Ireland in April. Um, and so that was exciting because we were in a remote community in, in Ireland. Um, and so really uh, seeing what kind of impact remote work can have on more rural communities. So um, that was a very interesting perspective. And then um, I just got back a couple weeks ago from Bali, which is where um, they had the running remote conference where I had the opportunity to MC. Um, and that was a, a very different experience too, because it was a it was more about scaling your business. And so it was larger companies that came and, and talked about the impact of remote work. Um, and of course it was in beautiful Bali. So it was pretty wonderful. Um, and then another benefit of being in Bali also was that there were many more people from, um, from Asia and from other parts of the world that haven't been um, really attending the other events that I've gone to. Um, and so it was nice. It was very, very a global conversation, which yeah, that's I appreciated. great. That's really, that's really, really great. And, and so it sounds like each of them had their unique flavor or focus. And uh, uh, that's really interesting. One in the Canary Islands and then one that's focusing on a, the impact of remote work in a rural setting, mm -hmm. um, which, uh, you know, Vermont, you know, you, you were talking about this before Vermont, mostly being a rural state has taken this approach of remote work and try to make um, the idea of remote work very attractive um, and even giving it a financial incentive to get people to come and work remotely from Vermont um, for their current employer. And so, um, so there's been a lot of coverage around that. And I think other cities and states have taken that approach, which has been really, 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 really awesome. Um, what, uh, what excites you the most about the future in regards to, you know, you're, you're an expert in this remote work field. You're in it every day. You're consulting companies through workplace lists on, on, on how to do it effectively and how to do it well. What excites you about um, the, in, the future of remote work and where do you think it's headed when you look at the landscape of the U.S. in particular? Where do you think this, this whole uh, concept of remote work is headed? Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about the potential impact this can have on communities hmm. uh, and communities all across the country. So Vermont, Virginia, wherever you are, um, I think that remote work really does have the potential to allow people to live where they want to live in communities that um, you know support their social and emotional needs and not just their professional needs um, and so a lot of communities that you know for lack of a better word are sort of dying um, I think that remote work could really be a way to bring additional life to these smaller communities that have suffered a lot of brain drain because of lack of professional opportunities. And so that to me is really, really exciting. Um, and then on the business side of things, I also see just more and more companies becoming aware of the fact that remote work is not just a trend, mm -hmm. but that you have to embrace it if you want to access the talent that you want. And if you want to grow your business in the current economy, um, so I'm, I'm excited for both of those things. That's great. That's really awesome. Well, we're, we're really excited um, about this October, October 17th, where we've invited you uh, to be one of our keynote speakers at the Reconciled Entrepreneur Summit. And we really are trying to take this theme of a re remote work as one of the main themes uh, that we're going to talk about here in Burlington, Vermont, and encouraging people to, to think about a place like Burlington to start their business and leverage remote workers. Um, when you, I'm really excited. I'm really yeah. excited. And yeah. just so everyone knows, Burlington is one of my absolute favorite, favorite <laughs> cities in the whole world. And so if you haven't been and you know, you're know you wondering what it's like, I'm just going to tell you, it's beautiful. You have the mountains, you have a big <laughs> body of water, you have a wonderful downtown pedestrian mall. And to me, those are like three of my top things. Like I want yeah. water, I want mountains, <laughs> I want the walking mall. 
and great food, all of that. So anyway, I'm really excited just about the venue, but also about the conference and being a keynote. Yeah, yeah, we're really excited too. And and you have a connection to Vermont, right? In, in, um, in your in your past, you you have a connection here. I don't know if you live here, went to school here, or, or what's the connection to Vermont? Yeah, my uh, my grandfather and my father built a house in Waitsfield, um, and so I grew up going to Waitsfield, Vermont, for summers um, and holidays. And I also taught at Middlebury College in the language schools. So I taught in the Spanish language school in the summer. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah, so I love Vermont. Oh, and I went to camp there. Like there's- Oh yeah, yeah there's so many connections, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, I, the nostalgia is heavy and real when it comes to Vermont. So I'm excited to go back. That's great, yeah. And so, you know, for those of you watching, you know, Tammy's gonna be one of our keynote speakers. She's gonna come and bring her expertise, her firepower around remote work if you're wanting to come and learn. And of course, enjoy the beautiful, beautiful Vermont fall on October 17th. So I'm really glad, Tammy, that you joined us today. I'm really glad that you- we able to share your story and share about um, this whole theme of remote work. If for, for somebody who's just starting out, whether they're just starting their business or maybe they got a company with some employees and they're like, hey, I want to try this remote work thing out. We can't find talent nearby. Unemployment's super low. It's super competitive environment. Um, where do you think they should start? Like what's a good resource? What's a good piece of advice that you can give for somebody who's just starting out on this whole remote, remote work concept? Well, they can always contact us and I'm happy to provide some specific resources on what they need. Um, but we have various uh, learning experiences. So a leadership course, Lead Placeless, which is for um, remote leaders who have not managed a team of remote workers before. And that's actually a very good entry point for people who are looking to hire remote workers because it gives you very good perspective on the skills that are needed in remote employees, as well as some of the challenges and approaches to managing remote team members. So that would be a good starting point. Um, and then, you know, we have additional learning experiences as well, depending on the situation. That's great. That's great. Yeah. And, and for those of you lead placeless, um, my company reconcile a big endorsement for it. We're going through it right now. We've been really been enjoying it and learning a ton from the material and, and we're looking forward to the interactions we're going to have with Tammy and our team. And so, um, you know, so if you need a, a, a referral or reference for it, we're, we can we can be that for you. We get no money from Workplaceless to say this. You, <laughs> you didn't ask me to say anything about it, but um, I, I think it's been a great resource for us as we've continued to scale and grow our remote team. Um, so, and Tammy, you said uh, to reach you is workplacelist.com. That's the best yes. place to go. Yep. And, yep. Um, and so, yeah, go to workplacelist.com. Check out what Tammy has to say. Look her up on YouTube. She's got a lot of great videos of different places she's spoken. And again, come to see her live in Vermont, Burlington, Vermont, October 17th. We're really excited to have you. Thanks, Tammy, again for joining us today. Thanks, Michael. Can't wait to see you in October. Talk to you soon. Bye.